So, good morning and welcome back to Daily Transfer Update. Um, quite a lot happening today, if I'm being completely honest. It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to everybody. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. If you are back home in this heat, the heat that I've got here, um, apparently back home's a heat wave. Make sure you drink plenty of water and put plenty of sun cream on because it's a different heat when you're at home and it is unbearable at times. It's unbearable out here at times as well, if I'm being honest. But yeah, just make sure you're safe with it. You don't want to end up getting any third degree burns and all that sort of crap. So, so yeah, but um, today is the day that two players, we'll start with the first one, and that is William Saliba, is having his medical. Now, Raul St. Haley flew home yesterday um, to complete the deals, get them all done. Um, apparently, it's going to be happening at Colney. They're going to be having their medicals at Colney, the two players. I'll come on to Ceballos in a minute. Um, but William Saliba, that deal was finally getting done. Now, whether that gets announced today, I'm still not so sure. But um, all reports lead to the fact that he is having his medical today. It's a deal that's been dragging on and on and on. Tottenham quite tried to come in and gazumpus. He favoured Arsenal. And finally, it's going to get done. The only downside is the fact that he's actually going to be going back to St Etienne for the season. So we're not even going to see him for another year, which, like I've said a couple of times on here, for me, listen, if he comes in next summer after having a fantastic season, we've already maybe doubled our money on him. Um, maybe even, I don't know, another 50% on top of what we've paid for him. But if he comes in next season having had a mediocre season because his mind's in London, he's trying to learn English and stuff like that, he's trying to look for a house, etc., etc., he might take his eye off the ball for St Etienne and he might end up having not a great season. So it's still a little bit of a risk Although from everything you've seen about this guy, all reports lead to the fact that he is going to be a top, top centre-back for many years to come. So that's him sorted. Um, all we've got to do now is hope he passes his medical. I can't see it being an issue. And then it needs to be unveiled because, you know, us fans, we've been sat waiting for months for this to be done. And um, to get any deal done, we've only signed Martinelli. So, yeah, I think, um, I think that'll put the, um, the fans, um, appease the fans a little bit. This one will as well, because this one's coming straight in, and that is Danny Ceballos. Um, he is coming in from Real Madrid on a loan. Apparently, this is without an option to buy. Um, so, I'm not so sure. Again, listen, we're helping Real Madrid. Now, um, Unai Emery has actually come out with a direct quote about Ceballos and said that um, he knows him from his time at Real Betis and the early days at Real Madrid. He's also said that um, he played in the under 21 championships uh, Euro Championships in which they won and he's a fantastic player. Now, again, he is supposedly having a medical today at Colney. Now, for me, like I said, I think that if there's no option to buy there, all we are doing is basically boosting a player's profile for Real Madrid to get a better player back. Um, now, the Real Madrid president, uh, president sorry, has come out and said that he's um, open to have talks with Raul and Haley next summer about the option to buy him. Now, if we've agreed that deal, listen, we've, we've got an Aaron Ramsey replacement in, in, um, in terms of position. He can play at number eight, he can play at number 10. Um, Emery said that himself as well in the, um, in the direct quote. He said he's a number eight, he's a number 10, he's a fantastic player. Um, so we have got the Ramsey replacement, but we've only got him on loan. Um, so then we're going to be in this scenario again next summer. Um, I suppose the hope is that he comes out next summer and says, well, I've had a fantastic season at Arsenal. I want to stay. I want to get game time. And um, they can provide that. Is he going to get a lot of game time at Real Madrid? I'm not so sure. Listen, they're going out spending absolute king's ransoms on players. Um, but, listen, he's a very good player. Can he cut it in the Premier League? That is my only concern with this guy. Um, but we shall see. You know, at the end of the day, um, you don't know until they put the shirt on and start kicking a ball in the Premier League whether they're actually going to be any good. So, um, hopefully that's the good news and hopefully um, he's going to be passing his medical today along with William Saliba. Um, now let's move on to um, Kieran Tierney. Conflicting reports today about Kieran Tierney. Some reports suggest that we're um, ending our interest in him. Other reports suggest that um, we're going to go back in with a new improved offer. We're going to offer him what they want and um, we're going we're gonna to get the deal done. Um, now, Reports have also linked us to the fact that we're going to switch away from the Kieran Tierney deal and go after Ryan Sessignon. Now, I'm not so sure that's true. Listen, Sessignon's going to cost at least what Tierney's going to cost. Let's be real. It was only a year ago that this kid was being tipped to go on to be one of the world's greatest left-backs and Real Madrid room for him, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, PSG, the list goes on and on and on. 
Um, he then came up to the Premier League. Didn't really do it in the Premier League. Didn't get a massive amount of game time compared to how he did in the Championship. But the step up from Championship to Premier League is ruthless. It holds no prisoners. And he didn't really do it. So they could have cashed in on him and got about 50 million quid a year ago. Instead, they wanted to keep hold of their asset. And I get that. Listen, they wanted to see what he could do in the Premier League. And he was a big part of their promotion campaign. Um, now, um, I think that, like I said, he's going to be around the 20, 30 million pound barrier at least. So why would we go and do that when we can go and get an established um, left back in Kieran Tierney? I'm not so sure Sessignon's on the radar. I don't know. Let me just get rid of this hornet that's harassing my cup, my cup of coffee. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a, that's a big hornet. But um, but yeah, listen, I'm not so sure that we're going to, um, we're going to sign... Um, Ryan Sessignon, I don't even think we're going to go in for him. Personally, I've always said, since we've been linked with Tierney, we will go in, we will pay the money and we will get the job done. Um, I'd still believe that that is the case. I do think that we will get Sessignon and I think that he'll, um, sorry, Tierney, Jesus, can't speak today. I do think we will get Tierney. It's just a case of when we get him and I think this will go all the way down to deadline day. And I'll be honest, it's getting a little bit boring now, um, this whole Tierney saga. If you want him, pay the money now. It's getting to that stage where you can't be bartering, you can't be haggling. Just go and pay the money now. You know, we've got two weeks left of the transfer window. If we want Kieran Tierney that badly, pay the readies, get it done. I understand the whole negotiation process. I understand all of that. Um, but at the same time, it's two weeks away now. So if Celtic wants 25 million and we want him that badly, pay the 25 million. Now, let's move on to Wilfred Zaha. Um, Wilfred Zaha, this is another one. It's gone on and on and on and it is getting boring now crystal palace want 80 million pounds there's no way in a million years they're getting 80 million pounds for him because he ain't worth 80 million pounds um secondly we have had two bids rejected now we have had the 40 million pound bid earlier in the transfer window and we have had a 65 million pound bid plus reese nelson on loan now that's what i did my stream on last night at five o'clock um Basically, the way the payments were staggered on that one, it was £55 million up front, Reese Nelson for a season on loan, and then £10 million in add-ons. Now, with the add-ons, I'm assuming that would be something along the lines of if you get Champions League football, you pay us X amount. Um, if you get to the Europa League final, you pay us X amount. Um, if you win a cup, you pay us X amount. So that £10 million would be staggered. It'd be based on results. It'd be based on trophies, I'd imagine, or qualification to Champions League. Now, Wilfred Zaha, in my opinion, is not worth £65 million, let alone loaning him Reese Nelson. So why don't we divert our attention to Everton Suarez? You know, the, the guy is younger than him. He's cheaper than him. He'd be a fantastic addition to the Premier League. He's got bags of ability, the same as Zaha, but he's a fraction of the price. And let's be honest here, right? Crystal Palace said that they wanted £70 million for wan -Bissaka. He ended up going for um, £50 million. They're saying they want £80 million for Wilfred Zaha. We've offered them £65 million plus Reese Nelson on loan. So what are they playing at? Because I know they've got to pay Man United. I know they've got to give them a, a percentage of the fee, etc., etc. I get it. There's no way we are paying £80 million for Zaha. There's no way Crystal Palace will get that for Zaha. So now that what's going to happen is they're going to end up in a position where they've got an unhappy player and the last 10 days or 12 days of the transfer window, whatever it may be, like, I don't even know how many days are left, what, two weeks? Um, it's just going to rumble on and on and on and you're going to have these stories coming out that Bayern Munich are interested and Wilfred Zaha is going to hand a transfer request in and he's spat his dummy out and this and that. You're going to get all of this palaver over the next couple of weeks about Wilfred Zaha. And Crystal Palace have only got themselves to blame. I know they want to get the maximum amount of money for him and they have every right to do so. He's under contract. But at the same time, £65 million plus Reese Nelson on loan. They're in cuckoo land. Seriously, they're smoking some mental high grade down in Croydon. Yeah, what's that all about? I don't get it. But there we go. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'm going to go and um, grab a spot of lunch and um, head down to the beach, I think. So have a wonderful day. Like I said, if it's roasting hot where you are, make sure you cover up with cream and drink plenty of water as well. So um, I will be back at five o'clock this evening. Um, I hope to be back before that. Hopefully, Arsenal will tweet out um, or put it on .com that we've signed a player. And soon as we do sign a player and I get the news come through to me, 
I will be going live streaming. So keep your eyes peeled, turn the notification bell on, um, stick a like on the video, it always helps the channel grow. And I'll see you all later on. Have a wonderful Tuesday, peeps.